Hey guys, welcome to another video of Sweevil's Garage. This episode, we are gonna get the windows tinted and uh, I'm gonna tell you some things that I like and I dislike about the truck after I've put in some miles on it. I've been driving it two weeks now and I know people that do car reviews might not get everything because they don't actually own the truck, they just borrow it. So we're just gonna go through some things, talk about some things from the comments from the one video I got about getting this truck. A lot of people are saying I'm lying about what I paid. So I'm going to show you guys my whatever purchase order. I don't know why I'd lie and say I paid less for a truck than I actually paid. But I'll show you guys the purchase order and the price. I'm going to tint the windows, show you what it looks like with tint. And then I'm going to tell you guys what I like and dislike. So stay tuned. Here we go. All right, we just got the call that the tint's done. So I'm going there now. I'm uh, super, super picky about my interior and stuff and scratches on my truck. So bringing it to tin shops and stuff, I get super nervous. So let's hope that everything went smooth, nothing's broken, no clips, no scratches, etc., etc. So we're gonna go check that out, see how they did, make sure they all look good before I take it, and uh, stay tuned. Let's see what it looks like. Here it is, guys. Oh my god, they killed it. It looks so, so good. No complaints. I didn't ask for a price and it's pretty expensive, but after seeing it, I don't even care. There's no bubbles or nothing anywhere. It looks so good. It's black. And the front and rear match, which is huge for me. I hate when they're not the same color. Sometimes they look silver and black, but it is, they, they killed it. It looks awesome. So very pleased. I'm gonna get it outside or get it home and we'll go around it. Made it home, showing you guys the tint I went with. So we did 5% all the way around. Well. The front's five, the back, I don't know what they did, but it evens out to 5% because I wanted it to match. So it's 5% all the way around, 35 on the windshield. And uh, let me tell you, definitely changed the look of the truck. I was I was planning on color matching the bumpers and the flares right away, and maybe the bead lockering, but now that I tinted it and the windows are black, I kind of like it how it is. So we're gonna hold off for that for now, see what see how I like it for a while and uh yeah it looks so much better with tint but that's where we're at on the tint now now let's get to the good the bad and the ugly about the ford raptor r after owning it for a while there's currently 700 miles on it driven it two weeks i don't drive around a lot i just drive to working back but let's go over some things while i drive to the gym that i like i don't like and some things that bother me so let's get to it first off so the key is in my pocket you can see that it lights up like this i think that means it unlocks which right now yes it's unlocked but sometimes it isn't like it's hit or miss and then when you go like this a few times with it in your pocket it still doesn't unlock you hit the button to lock it thinking it might unlock it, it doesn't so that is one little thing that really bothers me they should have made the fob better and my fob might the battery might be low for all i know i don't know it shouldn't be because it's brand new but it'll unlock and then i'll walk away say i come out here with the key grab the mail over there come back it'll be locked you know it just kind of bothers me and then you got to grab the key out of your pocket unlock it so that's one thing that i do not like and now that we're in it i'll tell you some other stuff that i like and don't like so we will start with something that you shouldn't care about when you buy one of these but i'll bring it up the fuel mileage so all i do is drive in town and to my shop which is like 10 or 10 to 15 miles away average 12 miles a gallon i'm very happy with that personally i think my gen 1 that was supercharged got when it was Roush charged, it used to get 11 something. The Whipple got 12, three, I think. So to get the same mileage, I'm happy with that, to be honest. And it's been going up 
more and more. I always drive around in normal. And my settings when I'm in here is a uh, sport, exhaust, sport, suspension, normal steering. I don't like sport steering. It feels lazy to me, which I was when you're out beating on it, you want that. You don't want too much steering. But that's where I'm at with that. I do like the radio and stuff, the layout. One thing that I do not like is the transmission when you're going like 30, 35. Sometimes it feels like it's not happy and doesn't know what to do. Obviously that's because it's a 10 speed, but I came from a Gen 1, which is a six speed and you never have to worry about that. So maybe that's just something I'm nitpicking, but I personally don't like it. Also, it feels really doggy when you get up, going from stop signs, driving normal. It just doesn't, I feel like they should have ran the gears out longer, more RPMs instead of shift so fast. Cause it feels like you're not going anywhere while you're hitting the gas. Like watch, shifting at 2000. I feel like it should have went to like 2500 just to get you going and then maybe skip a couple gears. So now that you're going 30, let's see, I'll put it in manual. We're in fifth gear at 30. So I feel like it should have went to third and then skipped two gears maybe. I don't know. But I don't really like that. I seen before I even owned mine, a guy that reviews vehicles said the same thing. He didn't like that about the transmission. That also could be maybe torque management to make them last longer. I don't know. But the transmission when you're driving around in normal is like that, but if you put it in sport mode, the truck, which is four, four auto, or I think it is four wheel drive auto, it shifts really crisp and really fast. Like, I feel like they tuned it well in sport, but driving normal, it's kind of sloppy. But like I said, maybe that's for longevity of the life of the transmission, I don't know, but one thing I do really like is the quiet exhaust. You can hear it's in sport right now. Now watch. Now the truck literally sounds electric. You can't hear nothing. I turned off my heated seat, or air conditioned seat. Listen, like there's nothing. <laughs> it's weird, but it's nice at times. So that's kind of cool. Then we'll go back to normal, which is what EcoBoost guys probably wish they had. Just that little bit of rumble. But in my personal opinion, sport sounds the best. I feel like it's the loudest. And when you let off, it kind of backfires. Baja, I feel like it gets a little quieter. I don't know. But the truck itself, when you're driving normal, say you let your grandma drive this since she's 80, she could drive it no problem. They're really tame. You can't feel the power at all when you're driving normal. It just feels like your average F-150. But then when you punch it, it's insane. I think the truck's warm. We'll do it right now. I'll just show you guys a launch quick. So it's shifting right now. We'll do this and then... That's what I like. I, I, I like that. I like how it doesn't always feel like a beast. It, uh, put it back in normal. Like you can let your buddy drive it, tell him not to beat on it, and you don't gotta worry about him wrecking it or anything, unless you have friends that you can't trust. But in sport, she rips. So, I don't know, I have 700 miles on it now. It's been pretty fun. Gotten on it quite a bit. The phone works really well. It never kicks you off or anything. So that's a good plus. I like the charger down there. It goes through my OtterBox case, charges my phone fine where my Apple doesn't even do that for wireless. So that's cool. Uh, I like how when you pop the hood, you can see the engine. It's not just fake covers like Dodge. <laughs> I don't care if it's got that Easter egg in there, you pop the hood and you don't even see your damn motor. I think that's retarded. So I like how it's just a bare motor. Come from a Ford guy. 
Uh, there's not a lot that I can say I don't like about this pickup, to be honest. I love the styling. I love the rigid fog lights factory. I like the interior layout. When I first got this truck from a Gen 1, I was in technology shock. Didn't really like it. Didn't know what to do. But after you drive it for a while, you get used to it. And the suspension is amazing. I don't even swerve for potholes anymore. I just hit them. And uh, when we stop, I'll go around and I'll show you some stuff that I like and don't like. I found something that there's like a rub on the frame. And I don't know if it's from the tires or when they built the truck. But I know it's not from me. So, but like I said, I got the windows tinted. It's super nice. Super dark. But that's how I like it. And, uh, yeah, it's been pretty fun. When it idles, the oil pressure looks really low. I don't know. I've checked the oil. It's full. 700 miles on it. See how it goes way up. So I don't know if that's just how they have it set. I don't know. But everything's pretty nice about it. The air-conditioned seat, you can actually feel the, the breeze through jeans and everything. So they work super well. AC works awesome. Even today's, to, the last three days have been 105 degrees. The AC still blows ice cold, even when I was kind of beating on it, so that's awesome. Sometimes supercharged vehicles get heat soaked. And that's, that's about all I got for talking about the inside. So the things that I said I don't like is the transmission wondering what gear it wants to be in. And that's pretty much about it. So we'll uh, jump out and talk about some stuff on the outside. One thing that I missed in that that I really don't like, the stereo is not that great. For a hundred and some thousand dollar truck, the stereo should be super good and it, in my opinion, sucks. So the surround isn't even doesn't even sound like surround. There's speakers all over this thing, like there up here in the headrest down there like they're everywhere in the middle and you can't really hear that i've tried to adjust stuff and you still can't tell it's not that great you turn it on max 30 volume and it's not even loud it's like half of what it should be in my opinion like if you want to jam out you can't even jam out so that is a huge thing that i don't like the radio sucks and uh once you do have a song with bass everything sounds hollow in here and it's the radio is whack. And then uh, I'll show you guys what I was talking about with the uh, rub on the frame that I don't know if it's from the tires or from uh, them building it. Let me grab a flashlight. It's on both sides. Right there. So if you guys have one of these, see if you have that scrape there, because maybe it's just from them building it. This side's worse than the other side, but I haven't had this on a hoist or anything, and uh, I haven't had an oil change yet, so it shouldn't be like that in my opinion. I mean, to me it's not a big deal, it's just I don't know what it's from, and I don't know, I don't know how the tire could rub there, but maybe it does. That one's way smaller. See it down there it's right above the sway bar so i don't think the tire can hit there because then the sway bar would have a rub i don't know all right guys just showing you what i paid since a lot of you are saying i paid one hundred and seventy thousand. that's where i bought it from that's my truck That's what I paid. And their printer didn't do the one, so he had to write it in. Exactly what I said. I was $3 off. I said $122.5. So, yeah, you can find them out there. I waited for this truck for a long time. You guys didn't watch the video uh, before or whatever. I had a video out a long time ago that I waited for this truck forever. So, yeah, there you go, boys. So line. All right, we're parked. They killed it on the front end. 
love the front end but there's always a but say it's nighttime you turn your headlights on you have the fog lights on which you push the headlight switch in the only the two outside ones work you have to flip the auxiliary switch to get the inside ones to work i feel like they should have had them both turn on i don't know if they had to do that for legal issues or what but the reason i care if that, if that was all that you had to care about i wouldn't i wouldn't care but say you turn say you it's daytime and you leave the auxiliary switch on the two middle ones are going to stay on i don't like that so you always got to remember to flip the switch it's kind of like having to remember to turn your headlights on if you want all four on because if you leave the switch on during the day the two middle ones show up which to me is retarded just having the middle ones on and i know it came with the covers but i'm too scared to leave the covers on because some kid will steal them or something just to have on his dresser at home but the running boards i really do like but it rained today and when i got out i almost fell so they're kind of slick even though they're super textured i don't know why they're slick but maybe it's still like grease or something from when in their brand new when they detailed it i don't know but uh the tailgate works really good i do like that it's in sport exhaust right now it sounds good but i think the tips are super ugly they probably got the holes and stuff to make it quieter or something i don't know but the tips are ugly in my opinion if you ever modified a truck before these came out you would never pick tips like that i just don't like it I love the graphics. I like how they went back onto the door, like the Gen 1s, the first 10 and 11 for rock chips to not hit. I like that because I don't like when it's only in the back. I do like the full graphics. And uh, yeah, there's not much to complain about, to be honest. But I've always liked Raptors, so that's kind of why, probably. But I do have to bring up something since my last video got a lot of hate not really hate but comments you ecoboost guys ecoboost raptor guys you are like a v6 mustang you have one but it's not cool at all <laughs> you might say yeah i can beat you in the desert blah 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 that's because you don't have horsepower and you can't spin the tires like ecoboost raptor is retarded that's why i never had a gen 2 that's why Gen 1 to a Gen 2, if you compare miles to miles, if they both have 100,000 miles, they're the same price. Because nobody wants a damn V6 in their pickup. Especially a Raptor that's supposed to own like the streets and the desert. Like it's supposed to be the bad of the bad. This is the bad of the bad. That's why you gotta pay for it. Everywhere I go, it gets attention. And maybe you guys might say, I don't, I don't own a Raptor for attention. Bullshit. Any car guy owns a car for attention. You don't modify a car just to modify it. You do it for attention. And everywhere I go with this thing is attention. I went to Sturdivant's today. They had me pop the hood. Five, uh, four out of the five employees came out to look at it. So that's awesome. But yeah, I don't care about TRX guys, blah, blah, blah. EcoBoost Raptor guys, you're the biggest fags out there. Because you can't afford Raptor R, so you just bitch about, oh, the V6 is just as good. No, it's not. I love the look of the Gen 2. I love the look. Truck to truck, I almost like them better than the Gen 3 for looks, but they never came out with a V8. Even a factory Coyote would have been better than an EcoBoost without a blower. So that's just my two cents. I know a lot of people agree, and all you EcoBoost guys won't agree, but you only have an EcoBoost because that's all you can afford. Let's be honest. So that is where I'm going to end the video. There's not much to complain about so far. We're gonna keep going with it. If something breaks or something, I'll let you guys know, but so far it's been a good truck. Doesn't wheel hop at all, which I didn't like in the Gen 1s. So the five link is super good. Suspension's super good. Some people said they've been having transmission issues, but I feel like that's guys that really, really beat the hell out of these things. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm not a Baja guy, I live in South Dakota. We, if we do anything with this off-road, it'd be muddy. Like, that's what we do here in a cornfield or something. We don't have sand dunes or none of that. I always just liked the Raptor when it first came out because it was a 1500 with a huge motor because I'm American. That's what I like. So I know this is just a 5.2, but it does have the blower. And going from the 6.2 supercharged to this, you can really feel that driving like a grandma that it is a smaller V8. You got to give the gas, give it more gas to get going. 
but anyways i'm just ranting now that's the end of the video thanks for watching guys you got you caboose guys can start commenting all your hate but at the end of the day you just wish you could afford the raptor r peace every time i hear an echo boost raptors exhaust ha! Gay!